collecting, we're still collecting, it's all good. As children of God, we honor our creating God by responding to the sending God calls us to as embodied in Jesus' words from Matthew 28, 16 through 20. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. This is the word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Thanks, Peggy. So, I don't know if you've noticed, but we started with creation, and then, of course, we moved into the New Testament. So you might wonder where all of this is going. I will tell you that the end point, sort of, in the message is that it's Trinity Sunday. So what you've heard are creation and a call to worship that involves Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, if you will, and the reference to that in the New Testament as well. So why is all of this important? Well, let me just tell you. It's our nature to want to share the stories of who we are and where we came from, of what came before us that shapes us into who we are today, and maybe even a little bit about who we are becoming. So today's mix of scripture readings offers building blocks for each of these things. If we start with creation, the shaping of creation in the narrative of Genesis tells us that while their oppressors saw the origins of the universe as violent and bloody, the Israelites told their children this very different story, a story rooted in goodness and blessing. Light was brought by God from the deepest night, they said, and order from chaos. The sun and the moon and the stars were set in the sky as signs of beauty and the changing of the seasons providing light and direction and the keeping of time. God filled the earth with vegetation that was fruitful and nourishing, moved the waters back from the land and provided a home for the creatures that crawled across it, walked upon it, and flew over it. And in the midst of this garden that we call earth, God tenderly placed human beings, blessing us and calling us to be caretakers and stewards of God's work. And then God looked upon all of that and found it good. Three different ways to hear this today. What's the takeaway? God is our creator, which we know, and we are created in God's image. This familiar Genesis story puts us here on earth, beyond that, and gives us direction. The great commission of today's gospel and epistle readings further define what we are meant to become now that we're here. Where do we go from here? So from 2 Corinthians are these words, put things in order, listen to my appeal, agree with one another, live in peace and the God of love and peace will be with you. What are we supposed to do? Those things. Greet one another with a holy kiss because all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit, hear them all will all be with you. And then again from Matthew, Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, so go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember I am with you always to the end of the age. Those last words of Matthew before Jesus ascends to the Father were go and make disciples. So God has put us here, given us direction, and a sense of who we are to become. With me so far? <laughs> Both 2 Corinthians and Matthew reference Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we recognize this threeness in our understanding as the Holy Trinity. God as three in one and one in three. I will tell you, in this now, my 11th year of ministry, I have run over the Trinity 
maybe really, um, for at least three times. And on this time around, I thought, there's really no way to explain the unexplainable. But what sits inside that three in one, one in three, that speaks to us so specifically that we hold that space for the Trinity? Let's just take a closer look at that piece and how integral this particular building block, this Trinity piece, is to the story of who we are. So borrowing an idea from Debbie Thomas of Journey with Jesus, we're going to look at threeness in a few ways. If we view threeness as the essence of God's being, we see that God is dynamic, fluid, diverse, always on the move, always spilling over, always a surprise. All important aspects of who we are as beings created in God's image even though we often tend towards security and safety over fluidity and diversity and change in the uncomfortable. But if God is about movement and flow, we are wired to do and be that way, to embrace the divine within us and let that be our guide as we go therefore to be and make disciples. God is dynamic and fluid when I think about things that I'm asked about as a pastor in this context, like, well, you know, change is hard, and what happens if we do this and something happens to the church, or what happens if we do this and this fails? We want to go in that direction. And while I didn't start this way as a pastor, I will tell you that sometimes the pocketed phrase that I will take out with a wink and a smile is, well, we are a resurrection people. So no matter what comes our way in that fluidity and flow that is God, we will rise. Make sense? All right. So if we view threeness as the essence of God's being, we will also see that God is communal, relationship and intimacy and connection and communion. We see this in gospel stories where the threeness of God exists interdependently, leaning into each other at Jesus' baptism in the wilderness, in Gethsemane, in Jesus' resurrection, and at Pentecost, which you all just celebrated last week. And leaning and living in us through God's breath, Jesus' love, and the spirit within each of us is this same relationship and communion. If we view threeness as the essence of God's being, we will also see that God is hospitable, in the 15th century, Russian iconographer Andrei uh, Rublev created something called the Hospitality of Abram. It's a picture that we'll see when we go to communion today, so you'll see it. But bear with me. It's one of the most well-known and beloved icons in Christendom. And in it, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, depicted as three angels who appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre, sit around a table. So imagine three angels sitting around a table sharing food and drink. Their faces are nearly identical, but they're dressed in different colors. The father wears gold, the son wears blue, and the spirit wears green. And in the picture, the father gazes at the son who gazes back at the father, but gestures toward the spirit, and the spirit gazes at the father, but points toward the son with one hand and opens this circle of people at a table to allow someone else in. Clearly the three persons around the table respect and enjoy one another and this interaction between them is representative of this one and three and three and one. The intent of the three as depicted by Rublev is always to add one more though. So they're not just the three, they're three plus. The idea is to extend the invitation to make the holy table more expansive and welcoming. When I think about what's happening now with the United Methodist Church, which has happened to other denominations as well, and people now leaving, churches now leaving the denomination because of their stance on sexual orientation and other kinds of things, I think about this three, this picture, and an open door so that all may be welcome. Because this is the issue that's floating and has been for many years now in our denomination, I am often asked 
if the churches I serve are reconciling. I've served in four different locations and none of them self-identify as reconciling, meaning they have a rainbow flag out front and are declaring acceptance of the LGBTQI community. Okay, There's no right or wrong here, just what is. And in my experience, though I've not served a church that claims that, whenever I am asked, and I've been asked two or three times here so far, are you a reconciling church by someone new to the area? My response is this. This church does not claim or define itself as reconciling, but I can tell you that in my now almost two years of serving them, that anyone who comes to our door is welcome. No questions asked. And we've watched it here. And I said, and, and you will find them welcoming and interested. And to me, when we do things that way, because frankly, if we are who we say we are, we shouldn't need a sign or a defining, just me. But when we welcome in that way, you start to get to know people and build relationship. God is dynamic and fluid and hospitable, yes, in such a way that that becomes not the issue because we see one another as the human beings that we are first. Does that make sense? One little sidebar here, it's interesting to note that as a pastor, I can't tell you that we will now become a reconciling church. When that's happened in congregations, it's entirely lay-driven. That's the way it works. A pastor can't come in and push something forward. The lay folks can come to a pastor and say, we'd like to pursue this and build this and whatever. Um, it's a way of opening a door that stays consistent no matter where you are. Does that make sense? What, I'm mo what touches my heart most is the opportunity and the blessing to serve folks whose first question is, or statement is, welcome, we're glad you're here. Period. Thank you for that. But wait, we're not done yet. <laughs> One more. If we view threeness as the essence of God's being, we will see that God is an expression of deep, unfaltering, life-giving love between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God's very being is grounded in love and created in God's image. We were born of this. God's love indwelt with the breath and love of the grace that is God sent forth by Jesus so that we would know how to be this, how we would know how to be love in the world and companion by the Holy Spirit. So when we forget, when you feel those, feel those little nudges that say, maybe I should tell that person they look nice, or maybe I should say hello, or maybe I should stop, that love is always with us. Created by God, in God's image, to understand that we are gods from the beginning, and that in our becoming, everything about us, everything in us, everything we breathe in and out, all we know about ourselves and the world we live in is grounded there in the love of God that we bring into ourselves and out into the world. There's a Trinity meditation by Steve Garnis Holmes that goes like this, the Trinity, Holy One, mysterious love, the I am, I wonder, and I surrender to you. Gentle Christ, self-pouring companion, I thank you, and I love you. Holy Spirit, divine breathing, emerging love, I bear you, I follow you, and in our becoming, become you. May we be so. Amen and amen.